ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد الحمد لله all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of ourselves and from the wickedness of our own deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, none can guide. I bear witness and testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger. As to what follows, my dear respected sisters in Islam, as uh, following on from the last few weeks, talking about, you know, getting involved in da'wah and um, being patient and all this, I offer a story or I'll be narrating a story to you about uh, a Russian revert who went through many, many struggles. And the reason for this is because she went through so much and at the end you understand where I'm coming from. I just want you to focus on your life at the moment now. I just want you to focus and think about what makes you disappointed with your life. What makes it hard? What's the, the, the worst thing that you find in your life that is affecting you? Is it something religious? Is it outside religion? Is it your family? Is it a sickness? What is it that makes you upset? And also, are you blaming the religion of Islam for this problem? You know, if you have a, a husband who's giving you hell, yeah, are you blaming Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Are you, you know, moving away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala whenever you go through a trial with your husband, or maybe your children? The same thing. Who are you blaming, or are you being patient and understanding that no matter what happens in your life, it is a test and a trial from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And just very, very quickly, inshallah, many people ask the question: When do we know when it's a test, and when do we know when it's a punishment? Okay, I'm not sure if any of you were here a few weeks ago when I entered this, but inshallah, just to recap, inshallah, how do we know when something, when something bad affects us? How do we know when it's a test and how do we know when it is a, a punishment? First, you need to look at your life. Are you obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of that trial, at the time of that test? Are you being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are you being disobedient? If you're being obedient, know that you need to be patient. If you're being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that you're going through another test which is wiping away your sins and making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's going to raise you in ranks. It's going to raise you in ranks in Jannah inshallah. But if you're being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know my dear sisters in Islam that this may be a punishment from Allah. And this is the thing. And in reality, a Muslim shouldn't be questioning really themselves. You need to be patient regardless whether it's a test or a punishment. And my dear sisters in Islam, we need to beware. We have to start waking up to our souls. Last Friday, what happened in Japan? Another tsunami, subhanAllah. We should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, we do not know when Allah is going to take our life. I'm pretty sure those people didn't wake up in the morning in Japan and say, you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to you know, shake the ground and send floods into our country. These people, subhanAllah, they thought because in Japan the, a lot of uh, earthquakes happened. And they were waiting for this. They reckon, they, the, the, the people said that they were waiting for this for 20 years. So they built the structures of the homes so strong. And they said it was earthquake proof, subhanAllah. Many of the structures, they stood through the earthquake. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? When the human starts to think of themselves as they're too high and too supreme, yes, the floor shook. But then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a huge wave. And this is what devastated the land. And this is what destructed the land, subhanAllah. And how many peoples, until till now, how many people are being found dead? 
waking up in the morning and not knowing what's going on. And my dear sister, one day you may wake up in the morning and die that day. And it's going to happen. It's a reality. You may fall asleep and not even wake up. So you need to pay attention to your life and what you're doing. Where you headed, which way. And I'm not talking about where you're headed in dunya. You know, it's very easy to have a successful life in this dunya. But we don't want the dunya. We want the hereafter. We want the paradise. And that's what the most important thing to a Muslim is. We have to start teaching ourselves and teaching our children. Allah, yesterday it was very, very upsetting. I have a, a, um, a teenage class. And some of these teenage boys, you know, they've reached the age of puberty. So they should know how to make ghusl, the major, uh, the major uh, uh, um, purity. And I asked some of them, do you know how to make ghusl? And wallahi, maybe two, three or four of the boys who uh, have reached the age of puberty do not know how to, uh, do not know how to make um, ghusl properly. Then who do we blame? Do we blame the child or we do, uh, do we blame the parent? Do we sit there and say, you know what? Is it the mother's fault or the father's fault? We need to get you know, more involved in our children and our souls and our family to guide them. Because how many of these children may have woken up and had a certain dream and they didn't even know how to purify themselves? Something so basic, we're not even teaching our children, subhanAllah. And you notice that the, uh, the, the parents are so called religious. The father has a beard. The, 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 the mother wears the, the khimar and all this. But their children know nothing. So Islam isn't just about having a look. It's about having knowledge and practicing that knowledge. So let us start fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start getting worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may affect or you know, uh, send a, a disaster to Sydney subhanAllah or wherever you may live in the world for the people online. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hopefully this story today about the Russian river is going to motivate you. Seeing someone who had, you know, who, who was out of Islam, who was a person going towards the hellfire, how they changed their life and how they, 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 they went through so many trials and they stuck to the uh, religion of Islam. So once there was a Russian uh, girl who came from a very respectable family. They were Christians and they were strict Christians. And, you know, they were Orthodox, subhanAllah. And they loved their religion and they believed that their religion was the religion of truth. Just as we state, Islam is the truth and we know it 100% these people thought that the religion of Christianity was the truth. One day a trader, a businessman, a Russian man, he came up to her and he said to her, listen, I've got a business offer for you. I want you to come with me to the Emirates and I want, you know, this is back in uh, a fair while ago where the, the people couldn't buy electrical goods and all this in Russia. So they used to smuggle them in and sell them in the black market and whatnot. So he told her, listen, we want to buy some electrical items. Come with me to the Emirates and you can make a lot of money. People would have been poor. People would have been looking for so many different ways to make money. So she agreed. She thought, you know, it's an easy way. I'll go there for a holiday, buy some things, come back and make some money. Easy. So she agreed and she went and there was a group of women that went with this man, this, business, uh, this so-called businessman. They arrived to the Emirates and he had a certain smile or smirk on his face, subhanAllah. And this showed his true intentions. From offering one thing, now he's uh, stating to them that he wants them to do another thing. So he told them the truth and he said to them, listen, I basically want you all to sell your bodies. I want you all to sell your bodies. And he started to promise them so much wealth and glamour and all this. If you do such and such, you'll get this. If you do this, you'll live a life like this and that. So subhanAllah, all the women agreed except for this one Russian girl. The girl who was upon the religion of Christianity. And also this, this shows that many other religions, the Christians, the Jews, they may have goodness in them. They may be good people. They may have good characteristics and morals and all this. But what makes the difference between us and them is Tawheed is our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember the worst crime in the world is to ishruq billah. Is to, uh, is to associate any other partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the worst crime no matter how good you are. People say that Mother Teresa, she was a great person. She used to look after the orphans. You know, they used to give, uh, uh, you know, certain people used to give so much to the poor and needy and done so much. But at the end of the day, the worst crime in the world is you associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you die upon that, no matter what you have done, it's not going to help you in the world. So you, this is the difference between us and them. So we don't say that all Christians are bad in, in their actions, but in their belief. 
There, there, uh, there, are diffi- uh, there are problems in that. So he convinced them all. And as I said, he started to promise them all these things. And this woman, this uh, Russian girl, she said to him, there is no way in the world I'm going to do what you are telling me to do. No way. I'm not going to do this. She believed, you know, in her religion. She knew that it was uh, immoral. She said, no wealth, no matter what you give me, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. No way in the world. And he started to laugh in her face and he said to her, you know what? You're in a strange land. You know no one. You have nothing. He had her passport in her... uh, uh, He had her passport and he said, I'm not going to give you back your passport and you're not going anywhere. And he forced this girl to stay with her, uh, with the other girls in an apartment. Then she started to beg the the trader or this uh, businessman uh, to send her back to Russia. He hid her passport and these other women started to indulge in a life of mischief and sin. They started to do the acts that this man wanted them to do. And she didn't. She refused. But she lived with them for a while. Then she started to look for her passport. She got fed up. She just wanted to get out of the situation that she was in. So one day she started to look for her passport and subhanAllah she found them. You know, this, this, uh, this businessman wasn't too bright after all. He kept the passports in the, in the actual unit. She found it. When she got her passport, automatically she ran outside. She left. She didn't sit there and think about it. She ran. And the only thing that she had was the clothes on her back. She had no money. She had nothing. She just walked. In so much distress, she ran out onto the street and she started to cry. Thinking, where am I going to go? Where am I going to be? Where am I? And then she saw a, a, a certain man with three women. She saw a man with three women, and mind you, my dear sisters, these women, they weren't his wives. One was his mother, and the other two were his sisters. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this, um, this trust in her heart for this man, and she approached him. And she started to speak to him in Russian. She started to communicate, and subhanAllah, he couldn't understand her. And in Arabic, he said, I don't understand. I don't understand. So she said, do you speak English? And he said, yes. And then she started to cry out of joy, subhanAllah. Yani, imagine you're in such a situation, being in a country that you know nothing about, not having a passport, a man forcing you to become a prostitute and to sell your honor and to sell your body. And then all of a sudden you're out. It's like you know, getting a bird out of a cage and being free. So she started to cry out of joy. And she said, I'm a Russian woman. And then she started to tell this, this uh, Arab man, what had happened. And but mind you, this Arab man, his name was Khalid. We don't know the, uh, the name of this woman, but we know the name of this man. So she started to explain to Khalid what had happened to her. And she said, please, all I want from you is just to take me to your, um, you know, just give me some shelter for two or three days. I just want to you know, organize myself so I can get a flight back to my country, to Russia. I don't want to stay or don't want you to do anything else, but just give me shelter and I'll organize the rest. And subhanAllah, he felt a little bit worried. He felt reluctant at, at the start. And he said to her, you know, just wait. Let me discuss with my mother and my t- uh, two sisters. So she, uh, he discussed with them and they decided to take her in. So they took her back to her house and she tried to ring her country. In the, in back, uh, in the, many years ago, I'm not sure how old the people that, that are listening uh, are, but many years ago, it was very difficult to contact overseas. You know, um, when I was growing up, maybe at 15, 16, or even earlier when my mother used to ring Lebanon, it was very hard. Sometimes the line wouldn't connect, sometimes the line would drop out, sometimes the voice was very, very faint. But now with technology, it's very easy. So back in those days, it was, uh, it was very hard. So she tried to uh, contact her parents, but she had problems um, contacting them. So she spent a few days trying to contact them. She couldn't, subhanAllah, she couldn't get through to them. But what Khalid and her, uh, his family noticed is that this woman was very respectable. She was a good woman. She had honor. And they started to give da'wah to her. But at first, what happened, she didn't um, accept anything about Islam. She didn't even want to talk about Islam. You know, as I said, mentioned, they thought that their religion was a religion of truth. And they hated Islam with a passion as well. These orthodox people hate Islam. So they kept trying and trying, showing them the beauty of, uh, showing her the beauty of Islam. And also one day Khaled went to a bookshop and he bought her a book in Russian, in the Russian language about Islam. And he presented the book to her and she wasn't rude or arrogant. She took the book and she read it. And subhanAllah, after them trying for so long, 
Nothing happened, but when he, he gave her this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put something in her heart. She didn't accept Islam straight away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened, yes, a little window in her heart. And she was moved by this book. And Khalid and, he, um, and Khalid and his family kept trying and talking to her in a nice way and showing her the beauty of Islam and whatnot. Then all of a sudden one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed her to enter Islam. Imagine somebody so strict on their religion and they thought or were brought, uh, brought up thinking that Christianity was the truth. Then all of it, you know, just within a matter of a week or two, she became Muslim, subhanAllah. And this, look at it, subhanAllah, this was from the beauty of what? First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed her to enter Islam. Second, the way that Khalid and her family treated this woman, they treated her with respect and honor. This is why whenever we go out and we talk to non-Muslims, we should always be polite. We should always be nice. We should always go out there with, you know, and present Islam in the best of ways. Not going out yelling and screaming and acting like, you know, we're, we're some Muslimin, like, you know, we're, we're animals or cannibals or whatever. We shouldn't be like that. Go out and preach Islam and show the beauty of Islam. And people's hearts naturally will open up. So this woman entered Islam and the thing was with this girl, this Russian revert, she perfected Islam. So there's a difference when you enter into Islam, okay, and that is it, and when you perfect Islam. She started to attend Islamic lessons and she felt a passion in her heart. And my dear sisters, I ask you all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you have this passion that this woman had? Do you have a passion, a zeal for the love for this religion so that you can learn more, so that you can preach more, so that you can do more, so that you can enter a higher level in Jannah? Do you have this passion? So she started to gain knowledge and she stayed strict. Her friends, the people that she used to stay around, she would only and strictly only stay around women that feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, religious women, women who didn't just sit there and chit chat about people and backbite people and talk about this and talk about that and waste their time. She used to benefit from her time. And my dear sisters, I've mentioned that a few times, benefit from your time. Don't worry about the TV. Don't worry about talking about this and that. Sit down and learn your religion. Benefit. Benefit others from your knowledge when you learn it. Do something that's going to benefit you in the hereafter. Now, this Russian revert, subhanAllah, she became scared. She became scared. Why? Not because of Islam, but she became scared if she goes back to Russia. Her family, what's going to happen? They're going to put pressure on her because they hated Islam and she knew what they thought about Islam. So after some time, Khalid and this Russian girl, they got married, subhanAllah. Okay? And it's not a love story, by the way. Okay? They got married. And then one day, Khalid took her to the shops. And in the shops... She saw a lady that had her face covered. She was wearing the niqab. And you know, this Russian revert looked at Khalid and said, What is this? What's this woman wearing? And he told and explained to her, This is what the wives of the Prophet uh, they used to wear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the wives, of the, uh, the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallam, to cover their faces. And she was quiet for a while. She didn't open her mouth. She was just quiet, thinking. Then out of nowhere, she said, You know what, Khalid? This is the proper Islamic dress. No one had taught her nothing, but she was just watching and thinking. She said, this is the proper Islamic dress. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to wear. And then Khalid said, how do you know this? And she replied, when, whenever I enter the shops, men do not lower their gaze. Whenever I go out to the shops, men do not lower their gaze when they see me. And it makes me feel uncomfortable. So please, ya Khalid, allow me to wear this. Let me wear the niqab. So that my beauty will only be for you. And how much do we learn just from this, in a few words from this Russian revert, subhanAllah. She could work out from herself. First, for men, need to lower their gaze, which they don't. Second, a woman to wear the niqab, it is a good thing, it's a good action. And we are scared, subhanAllah, to wear the niqab. People, Muslims, say that what? That you're a freak. People sit there and say that there's something wrong with you. You're overboard. You're too much. Why are you doing this to yourself? But the main thing is that she said, let my beauty be only for you. My dear sisters in Islam, understand when you're wearing your clothes, when you're getting dressed, when you are beautifying yourself for the streets, it is wrong. Only beautify yourself for your husbands. That is the most important thing. So Khalid, unfortunately, he said to her, no, stay as you are. 
Just wear the clothes like my mother and my sisters. Don't do anything else. Just stay like that. And days went past and her iman and her love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became stronger and stronger. And subhanAllah, everyone that met her loved her. No matter who it was. Whoever met her loved her. Then one day, she was looking through her passport and she noticed that the expiry date had come soon. She needed to renew her, her, um, her passport. But there was a problem. For her to renew her passport, she had to go back to her country. She needed to go back to her country, subhanAllah. So Khalid and his wife decided that they need to go back. Khalid, first and foremost, he seems like a very edgy man. So he started to become what? Concerned because she was wearing the hijab. He was concerned that the people of Russia are going to mock him. They're going to make fun of him or give him a hard time. But she said, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to stay in my hijab. I'm not going to do what Allah, you know, I'm going to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. And I'm not going to worry about what the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala think. So she kept to that. And he said to her, do as you wish. Anyway, on their way to Russia, they were mocked at, they were laughed at. And Khalid, he's not used to this. He started to become angry. And this Russian revert, she would sit there and she would laugh and smile. It didn't bother her one bit that she was going through a hard time. So my dear sister, when you're in the shopping center and someone looks at you and says, you know what, you got a tea towel on your head. You know, you look like this, you look like that. Why are you wearing such a thing? You know, go back to your own country. Don't worry. Wallahi, don't worry. Don't put this in your mind, not one bit. Be firm. And say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me a Muslim, has made me a believer who is going to go to Jannah, inshallah, through his will. And I am being tested at this moment now. I'm being tested and I'm being rewarded for this test. This is what you have to keep reminding yourself. Don't come home and you know, start stressing out. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of people look at me, looking at me funny. I'm sick of people not respecting me when they're talking to me. Remember, if you're a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this place here called the dunya, this place called the earth is a jail for us. It is a jail for us. So of course you're going to go through hardship and people are going to look at you funny. Nowadays, if you're not half naked in the street, there is a problem. They'll look at you and say, you know, you're not normal. Subhanallah, you're not showing off your skin. There's a problem. But remember, stay firm. Stay firm. Remember the reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just remember Jannah when you enter Jannah and you think, you know what? All that hardship was nothing. This is the day that I was waiting for. For all this, what I see in front of me now. My dear sister, five times to ten times the size of this dunya you get in Jannah. What else would you want after hearing that? SubhanAllah. So they arrived in Russia. And Khalid assumed for some reason that they were going to stay at his in-laws, at his, um, uh, his wife's parents' house. But when he mentioned this to his wife, the look on her face said something else. She knew there was going to be trouble. She knew there was going to be problems with her family. So what happened? She said, no, we'll stay at an apartment near the house. After we get my uh, passport renewed, we'll go visit them, then we'll go back home. So they did so. They, went to an, uh, they rented out an apartment and they stayed there. The next day they went to renew the passport and it wasn't so easy. They went to the counter and they had a, a photo of her with the hijab. They had a photo of her with the hijab. Then all of a sudden... At the counter they said, no, we need a photo like the photo in the passport. She didn't have the hijab on in the passport. She said that we need to have a, 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 a same photo. So go bring us a photo without the hijab and issue it to us. And then we'll give you your passport or renew your passport. And she said, no, no way in the world. They, they said, we have to verify who you are. The photo in the passport and you look any different. We need to verify it. And she said, no, I'm not going to take off my hijab. Go get me a woman, go get me a woman, so that I can take off my hijab and verify it. And Khalid, he got angry with her. He said to her, why are you doing this? لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul more than it can handle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not burden a soul more than it can handle. So just give it to them. And she said, no. But Allah, I'm not going to take off my hijab. There's no way that I'm going to take off my hijab. So they wanted to take the matter further to someone higher. So they went and saw you know, a supervisor and this became even more of a problem. The supervisor said the exact same thing as the person outside. And he got so angry with them 
And Khalid actually got upset more with his wife and he said he repeated again, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. You know, Allah doesn't burden a soul more than uh, can handle. And she replied to him, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ Whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find a way out for them. SubhanAllah. She was firm. Even though she was in need of this, but she wouldn't, she needs, she wouldn't uh, break down. She stayed firm. No matter what they're going to do to me, I'm going to stay firm. I'm not going to take off my hijab for anyone. I'm not going to go take a photo without my hijab and present to this man or to any male. So they started to argue in front of the officer and the officer grabbed the passport, the application and just chucked it out of his office and told them to leave. He, Khalid, was very, very upset. He was angry. Why are you doing this for? Just make life easy on us. Go do what they want. And she said no. So night came and Khalid basically prayed, uh, prayed Isha and went to bed. And here this Russian revert looked at her husband and she said to him, What are you doing? How can you sleep in a time like this? We're in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you go and sleep? Get up and pray to Allah so He can help us. Get up and cry to Allah so He can help us. So Khalid here got up and he prayed as much as he could and he went back to sleep. But the Russian revert, she stayed praying until Fajr. She stayed up crying and praying and making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could make a way out for her. To make it easy for her. At Fajr she woke him up and she told Khalid to pray with her. So he got up and he did. In the morning she said, come on let's go back and try to get the, the passport. And he said, what for? You heard what they said. You heard what they said. Then, subhanAllah. Uh, she said to him, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله That don't despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, look at him, subhanAllah, her trust already. She was only Muslim for such a short period of time and already her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so strong. It was so high. She knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get her out of this situation. So they went and they arrived at the, the, the passport place where they, um, they renewed the passports. And one of the officers straight away called her and, she, uh, and they issued her with a brand new passport, subhanAllah. They issued her what? A brand new passport. And she looked at him. And this was a lesson for Khalid and it's a lesson for us. And she said, uh, Whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find a way out for them. SubhanAllah. The importance of dua, the importance when you're in a situation to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just with your faraid, not with just the obligatory things, but also to do more acts of good deeds. You need something in life, ask Allah. But you need to ask a little bit more than just putting up your hands, oh Allah please, that's it. No, you need to keep asking. You need to be consistent with whatever you want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you inshallah. So on their way back to the unit, they decided to visit her parents. You need one test after one test after one test for this girl. And also Khalid, you could say he's going through the test as well. So next, they decided to go to her parents' house. You know, they knock on the door, they went past, they knock on the door. And just imagine there's an Arab looking fellow with your daughter, you know, you're non-Muslim, you're white skinned or whatever you may be. And your daughter all of a sudden now has a cloth over her head and wearing clothes that are loose. They knock on the door and her brother answered and she was so happy to see him. She grabbed him, she hugged him, she kissed him. You know, she was so excited to see him. But the look on his, her, uh, her brother's face wasn't the same. They entered into the house and they told Khalid to sit down in the, in the living room. So he sat down and she went in and she started to speak to her family. And then Khalid understood from the tone of her voice that things weren't going well. He couldn't understand what was going on because he didn't speak Russian. But he kept, and he knew from the tone of his wife's voice that they were arguing. Then all of a sudden the voices, the men's voices, became louder and louder. Why? Because they were, going, uh, they were coming towards Khalid. As they came towards Khalid, he's thinking at first, they're going to come and greet me. You know, they're going to go hug me, kiss me, welcome my son-in-law and all this. But the opposite happened. They started to beat him and push him. They started to punch him. And he became any fearful for his life, subhanAllah. He was very scared at that moment. He saw the door and straight away he ran. He ran out of the door and they chased him, subhanAllah. And the only way he lost him was when he went through a crowd and they couldn't find him, subhanAllah. Khalid went up into the room. 
He went to the unit and he was scared for his life. He looked at himself in the mirror in the bathroom and he saw himself full of blood. Blood was dripping down from his lips. He had cuts and bruises all over him. They gave him a good belting. So he feared for his life, subhanAllah. Then all of a sudden, he remembered his wife. What would have happened to her, subhanAllah? If they belted him or they, if, they, if they beat him up in, in, in that way, what would they do to her? And then shaitan came and he started to whisper to, to Khalid, you know, that she's going to leave her deen. She's going to do this and she's going to do that. So he feared for his life and he locked the door. And he didn't know what to do. He started to think, subhanAllah. The next day came and Khalid thought, you know, he's going to go down to the, her parents' house and just look, maybe he can get a glance at his wife. Maybe he could see his wife and talk to her and discuss what they're going to do. So he went down the first day, from the morning until evening. And he noticed in the morning that her brothers, uh, her brothers and father would leave for work. And then he'd look and wait. He wouldn't approach the house the first day. The second day, the third day came, what happened? After the brothers left, after a while, the door opened up. And Khaled noticed his wife come out. Her clothes were torn. Her, she was all bruised. From her wrist and her, her ankles, there was blood dripping. They were torturing this woman. They were tor torturing this Russian river, subhanAllah, day and night. So she came to the door and he ran to her. And he couldn't but cry because of the state that she was in. You know, he saw her, her hair was pulled, so many bruises, she was black and blue and blood dripping. And he started to cry, subhanAllah. And she said to him, Oh Khalid, don't get between me and my family. Don't get between me and my family. Just leave it up to me. I'll work out a plan. Just go back and I'll come to you. Don't worry. <coughs> so he listened to her. He went back, feeling helpless, subhanAllah. He waited one day, two days, three days, and mind you, every day he would go down and watch outside the house, just waiting for her. So, after four days, at night time, he heard a knock at the door. And he got scared again. And he screamed out, who is it? And he heard his wife's voice saying, it's me, open the door quickly. He opened the door, and in that state, subhanAllah, he need beaten and he need battered and bruised, as they say. She came in and she said to him, quick, let's leave. And he said, now, but look at you. And she said, we have to leave now. If my parents find us, that's it. We're going to be finished. <coughs> so they packed up and she got changed. And he couldn't believe when she was changing. He couldn't believe how much, you know, how much, uh, how much she was battered and bruised. How many bruises she got. How many cuts she had. They beat her really, really severely. So they left in the taxi and uh, Khalid said to the taxi driver, we want to go to the airport. And she said, no, my parents, once they find out, uh, find out that I've left, they're going to go straight to the airport. So we'll go to another city uh, which has an airport and we'll leave from there. <coughs> and he agreed. So they went and they stayed the night in a hotel and they sat down. She got changed. She cleaned herself up a little bit and he started to cross upon her again. He looked at her and he said to her, what happened? What went on? <coughs> because remember the only thing that Khalid saw was when he entered and then they just chased him out he didn't know what happened to her after that so basically she started to tell him what happened she said after I went in um, I left you at the uh, in the lounge room I went in and spoke to my family and they said what is this what are you wearing and, she, and who is this strange man that's with you and she said I told them that this is my husband and I've become a Muslim this is the dress of the Muslims and they became very upset and then she said, wait, wait a second. Then she started to explain to them what happened with the Russian um, businessman that took her and wanted, to, uh, wanted her to become a prostitute. And the father said to her, in his, it's very strange how the father actually said this. The father said to her, it would have been better if you had become a prostitute than to become a Muslim. It would have been better for you to become a prostitute than to become a, uh, to become a Muslim, subhanAllah. So they chained her up. And they started to beat her and she explained to him, that's when they, my brothers came out to beat you up. And she said, day after day, they would beat me up from the, even, uh, from the, the afternoon until the evening. And the only way that I would fall asleep is from becoming unconscious, from them beating me up. They wanted her, they wanted to force her to leave Islam. Forcefully. They weren't taking no for an answer. There is no way in the world that you're going to stay a Muslim. 
So every single day they'll beat her and beat her and beat her. During the daytime, um, the, the, the girl, the Russian revert, her sister and mother will be in the home. Now the Russian revert, her sister, she would say to her, why are you doing this to yourself? Why? Why don't you make things easy for yourself? Just leave Islam. So she started to preach Islam to her. Even while she was going through a test and a trial, she was even giving da'wah, subhanAllah. To the point where her sister's heart became soft and eventually she entered Islam as well, but secretly. She became Muslim. She became Muslim, seeing her sister, what she went through, and she became Muslim, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up her heart. So they started to plot and plan. How am I going to get out of this situation? She's uh, chained up. One of the keys was with the sister and one of the keys were with the brother. So they made a plan. The only way we can get the key from the brother was to get him drunk. So they waited. He came home at night and they started to, to give alcohol or the, the, the sister started to give alcohol to the brother so he could become drunk and unconscious. Once he did so, she got the key and she undone her sister, the Russian revert, and straight away she left and she got out of there. SubhanAllah. Yani, the last words for this Russian revert to her sister was just keep your Islam down and we'll get back to you inshallah we'll try to get you out of the situation that you're living in so my dear sisters staying firm staying firm on your religion is so important they went back to the Emirates and she stayed in hospital for a while until she became better and she stayed what? she stayed firm on her deen she didn't lose it because she went through a trial and she didn't just go through one trial or two. And her trials weren't something so basic. It was a major trial. She might have thought that she's going to lose her life, subhanAllah. They beat her so severely. Imagine your family you know, beating you up so, so, so hard. What would you do and what would you say? How would you feel? But this sister, her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so strong. And this is my message to you, O oh sister in Islam. Your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be strong. Your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be there. You don't rely on anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you rely on your husband, but not total reliance. Your total reliance is only upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love your husband, yes, but the true and total love is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this, don't lose yourself for anyone in the dunya. Don't lose yourself. No matter how close a person is to you, do not lose your deen for anyone. Your love for Allah is important. My dear sisters in Islam, that's the story of the Russian revert. She went through so much. A person being so strict upon Christianity, then becoming so strict upon what? Upon Islam. So where are you? Where are you now? How would you base yourself? Are you a person that's strict on Islam? Are you preaching Islam? Are you doing anything for Islam? Are you doing anything for yourself for Islam? Just think about these words I'm telling you. If you're not, my dear sister, remember, you need to gain. You need to gain knowledge. If you have knowledge, this will be your ultimate, ultimate thing that's going to save you or the ultimate thing that will save you. Why? Because if you stay ignorant, you're not going to know how to get through tests and trials. When something gets to you, when something afflicts you, when a test comes, how am I going to get out of it? You need to stay you need knowledgeable. If such and such happens, on Friday when you saw the, uh, the tsunami, what did you think? Did you think, oh poor people, ya haram, these people are getting punished? Or these people are going through so much? You know, on the news you see the, the people bringing out these children that are, are orphaned. But why is this happening? If you had true knowledge, you'd understand why. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us about the people of the past. When people become too arrogant and they start to see themselves as they're too high, they're the leaders of the world, they're the ones that are running the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends devastation. Why? To remind the people to wake up. Well, at least to remind the people with understanding. And every single Muslim should have understanding because number one, you're already Muslim. You should already understand so wake up, O oh Muslims, wake up. Wake up to yourselves. No, my dear sisters, no. Understand. Some of you, you know, may be looking for a certain element in life. Allahu Alam what it is. Maybe you just want your husband to love you more than anything in the world. That's your main aim in life. That shouldn't be your main aim. Maybe some of you are thinking, you know what? 
Only if my husband bought me a brand new car, I'll be happy. Only if my husband sent me overseas for a few months, that's got you know, that's going to be the most uh, you know the most beneficial to, uh, thing to me in my life. That's going to fix my problem. And Subhanallah, people and women, unfortunately, you know, we're saying both men and women, but women sometimes you know, problems cloud their mind. They think, you know what? If I get such and such, that's going to be the cure for me. Nothing is going to cure you, my dear sister. Nothing is going to cure you from what you're going through without what? Without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just imagine. Imagine the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This morning we're reading from Riyadh al-Salihin about the companions and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Uhud. He took out his sword and he said, who is going to take my sword? Look at the companions and think about our souls. You know, men and women. Think about it. He said, who is going to take my sword? All the companions rushed. All the companions, they rushed. Me ya Rasulullah. Me ya Rasulullah. Me ya Rasulullah. They want to compete. And he said, who's going to take this sword? But give it, uh, give it its rights. Then the companions started to think, but Abu Dujan was the first one. And said, me, O Messenger of Allah. And he took the sword in the battle. Now if we turn around and say, oh my dear sisters in Islam, we have some work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to do. First thing you're going to think, you know what? I'm not sure if I can do this. I'll have to think about it twice and three times. I'm too busy. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, you've got a million excuses. You have a million different reasons to say, I'm not sure. Look at the companions. You need to get your priorities right in this world, my dear sisters in Islam. Understand what's going on. Why did Allah create you? And this is a basic lesson that I gave to children yesterday. Why did Allah create you? To worship Him. Why did Allah create you? To worship Him. Simple. My dear sister, who wants to work for Allah? Every single one of you should be raising their hands up. Saying, me. Me. Why? Because Allah created me to worship Him. So we need to work out our priorities in life, inshallah. Just work it out. If something happens... In your life, think about it two, three times, four times. Don't jump, don't get angry, don't be abusive. Think about it. Yes, many women are going through tests, and I'm going to keep mentioning it, their husbands. That is a major test for them. Maybe that's what's pulling you away from the deen of Islam. Well, start teaching your husband. Start pushing him to come to the masjid. Start pushing him to come to lessons. Start pushing him to grow his beard and to wear the sunnah. And to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of sitting up and going, you know what? Let's make some popcorn. Let's sit in front of the TV and watch a movie. Put the kids to sleep and have a nice romantic night. Is that what you want in the dunya? Having a romantic night? Imagine after all these romantic nights, you moved away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine after all those romantic nights, your husband leaves you. Imagine after all those romantic nights, you know, something bad happens subhanAllah and you lose your deen. Because of all the movies you watched and all the bad that you've done and all the bad that you spoke about and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves you away from the deen. How would you feel then? How would you feel? So inshallah my dear sisters, get as close as you can to the deen of Islam. Get as close as you can to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through reading the book of Allah. Wallahi, if you can't read, learn to read. If you can't learn and if you find it difficult, listen. Read the, translated, uh, the translation of the Qur'an. Read the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Wallahi, this will open your heart. The only way that you're going to find satisfaction in the dunya is by getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up your heart and give you understanding. And this is what you need, understanding. How do I get through this life? How? So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to give us understanding and to make us of those who get closer through action and deeds. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he gives us the highest level in Jannah. Wa jazakumullah khair.